In this video, we show this tilting mechanism and how it was designed and built to be part of this tadpole tilting cargo trike. I've been making trikes via an iterative process, trying to get to the greatest possible vehicle to ride, and this is the third version of the tilting mechanism. I'll tell you why I think this is the best so far, and like usual, ask for advice to make things even better. Just for context, this is part two of this build. I'm dividing it into parts because I think everything would be too much for one video. In part one, I cut a bike, extended the frame, and made the steering tubes and cable steering system. The pulleys were 3D printed in metal and kindly offered by GLC 3DP. I have a link to them in the description. Please consider them if you would like almost anything manufactured. So let's continue with the build from there. This is the vehicle that we are aiming for, and this is where we left off in build part one. The next step is to build the frame for the cargo. I'm not gonna go into a high level of detail in this part. There is quite a lot of cutting, notching, and welding, but with no real design challenges. I'll just show you real quick how I went about it in a quick montage. First I make as much as I can in the shed and then I take the parts to the trike and I realize how much position is important to get things welded. And then in the end I paint it in the final color green. So let's work in the front now. It will have this tube that fits into the frame tube and these four plates that the wishbones will fasten to. The plates are inclined by 10 degrees, which represents the caster angle. In my previous build, I did a series of geometry tests and came to the conclusion that 10 degrees works great for this vehicle. Check it out if you're interested. Let's get this built then. I bought four pieces of aluminium of the right size and 3D printed masks to mark the borders and the holes. Then I pre-drill with the center bit and then do the edge holes straight with a 12 millimeter bit. The center hole to fit into the tube has to be done at an angle of 10 degrees. And it fits as intended. And just rounding those edges and the first plate is done. And I follow the same process to make the remaining three and give it a quick test to see if they fit like they're supposed to. So before I weld the plates to the tube, I'm going to make the wishbones so that I assemble the wishbones and use them as jig to make the plates in the right place. So these are the wishbones that we're going to make now. Uh, you can see that the upper one is a little bit different than the lower one. The upper one, I did like that right angle because it's just easier to make the brackets for the shock absorber. And also the lower one is longer than the upper one. And this is to satisfy the geometry of the scrub radius being equal to zero. It just needs this geometry to be great to ride. Again, if you're interested in details about the geometries, check out the video that I made before with all the geometries analysis. To help me make the wishbones, I make a jig out of wood so that the tubes fit in the right place and I notch the tubes before so that they fit perfectly. 
The same jig works for the lower and for the upper wishbone. Then I just tack it in the jig and weld the rest outside. And here they are, the, all the pipes welded for the four wishbones. The next step is to fit the frame side ball joints. And for this I make a hole in the pipe that I can use to weld the thread of the ball joint through. For the knuckle side ball joint I use the same method. Look at that, four wishbones complete. And now we can use the wishbones to put the plates into the correct position and weld them into the tube. And I just attack that in place and I'm gonna use this assembly to weld the brackets of the shock absorber. In rest position, the wishbone should be horizontal, and that's to keep the roll center at the ground level. I'm giving it this little bit of an angle to compensate for the sag of the shock absorber. Wow, first working mechanical bit. And then I weld everything properly or at least as properly as I can. Give them some paint to increase the beauty. I paint things in different colors because I think that's uh, best to explain it and show it. Also in the drawings you can see that things are in different colors. I just try to group them and uh, yeah I just hope that's a better outcome to sort of communicate how I'm doing this. All right now we're gonna install this should be easy enough to just slide this it's never easy enough slide this down the tube uh, this was not easy at all after I welded, I guess the tube shrank or just became less round. They have to hammer so much to get that in place. All right, so I uh, finally hammered this in. As you can see, it's uh, yeah, very hammered. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna give some advice. The tube that I used, the, the inner tube is 54 millimeters in diameter and the outer tube is 54 millimeters in inside diameter. So if it was now, what I would do is choose an outer tube that has at least one more millimeter in inner diameter than the inside one in outside diameter just one millimeter gap at least because if it's um just when you weld it and it becomes less round and it was big big pain to put this in uh but now it's in so let's continue even though it's super tight i make a hole to fit a bolt and uh, yeah just make sure it doesn't move anywhere now seems like a good time to weigh the frame uh, well it's just the frame now plus the steering components but well and I think Less than 50 kilos is pretty cool. All right, it is time to install the wishbones, which will be placed here. And they will be secured with these shoulder bolts, like that.
these boats have a barrel of uh, 12 millimeter diameter and are just long enough to go to the second plate but not to the end. In the list of parts you can find these shoulder bolts if you're interested. And I just fit those parts bit by bit with uh, finally the ball joint on the knuckle side which is the component that we're gonna make next and here it is the knuckle it has the responsibility of joining the wishbones of holding the wheel the brake calipers and the bracket for the steering I bought this aluminium plate to make both knuckles and I 3D printed this template that I'm going to use to draw the cuts and mark the places for the holes. First I cut it to size and then I cut the angle bit. Nice! Then I mark the holes. Now I pre-drill with the center bits, then I make the small holes, and then the big hole, and now I'm making the holes that are gonna be threaded with M12 to receive the ball joints. And finally, the hole that is gonna secure the spindle for the wheel hub. The ball joints have M12 threads, so that's bolted in and tightened. And the last part, the shock absorber. All right, there are some words to be said about my new logo. It's uh, pretty similar to the last one. It's still a lightning bolt, but uh, now it's uh, turned around and it's uh, an lightning bolt. And at the same time, an N uh, for my last uh, name, uh, Nevis. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because this uh, idea was suggested by someone that was uh, watching the video and noticed the logo and gave me this idea and I just used it. So thank you very much. Which just shows how cool it is to share things in the community and have things as personal as the logo improve by people sharing their opinions. So yeah, thank you very much for that. So I have a question, if you seen my last build, these bearings here with, were made with just normal ball bearings and I decided to change to this ball joints. The reason I decided to change to ball joints is I think they're more forgiving in the design because things can be twisted a little bit and they'll compensate with the ball. And also, I thought with my manufacturing capabilities, I could make this um, just uh, a better construction like this. Everything is just super tight now. No, absolutely no play anywhere. It's a really good result. And I also considered bushings. Uh, so... If someone is, has an opinion on ball bearings versus ball joints versus bushings for this application, I'd love to hear about it in the, or read about it in the comments. Thanks. I'm going to explain the knuckle a little bit. 
there is just so much going on here. So obviously it has these two holes threaded M12 to get the um, ball joints. Then it has these two holes that are gonna put used to put the bracket in place. This bracket will be used to secure the brake calipers. Then it has these two holes. These two holes are going to be used to secure the bracket for the steering. This is going to yeah, connect to something here and uh, do the steering like that. Um, these two holes on top here are to secure the mud guard that this will have one day. And finally, this um, hole is made to secure the spindle for the wheel hub and it will be then welded on this side that's why it's had it has this big hole there now i'm working on the spindle the wheel hub and the wheel and that's what i'm going to show in the next video the reason why i'm doing this in parts is because this is just so much work and uh, in one video i think it would just be too much or i would have to skip a lot of detail so if you're interested subscribe and then youtube will know that you're interested and it also helps with the project so cheers see me next time